episode 87 of the Downtown Podcast. Before we get started, we're going to do our Downtown Podcast tradition of having our guest select the fortune of the week for us. Oh, yeah. Pick a special one. Boom. Great. Alan, our fortune cookie handler, will come by and get that for you and deliver it to our audience. Thank you. <laughs> So tonight we have a special guest, Evan Savar. We're sorry to miss our usual co-host, Susan Hinton, and as well as our other supposed to be here uh, guest, JR Beatbox. So Evan actually promised that he would beatbox for us instead of JR, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I put you on the spot like just that. Just tell me when to go. I'm just kidding. Evan is with Bully Alert app. There's tons of apps that come out today, but- Spin it backwards. <laughs> oh, it wasn't serious? <laughs> Oh, I know, sorry. Uh, but so <laughs> I set myself up for that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All part of the show. Uh, Evan's actually with Bully Alert app. There's tons of apps that come out today, but he's working on something really meaningful. And I'd love for you to tell us um, about your app, your partners, and you know what, ex what exactly does it do? Thank you for uh, having me here. Uh, I, I'm so excited to share my app with as many people as I can. And uh, so yeah, Bully Alert app is an app that is being uh, piloted right now in a select number of Clark County schools. Awesome. And uh, basically it allows a student from uh, you know, the comfortability of his uh, classroom or uh, without going in the office report uh, an issue through his mobile phone. That's great. We're really excited for it. Um, so do they do it anonymously or? Yeah, so there's an option that they can be anonymous or they can uh, put their name in it's really kind of like, you know, for students, like just that they know that somebody's watching potentially because witnesses can report stuff too. And how did you get involved and what inspired you to do your bully So I've been kind of coming up with creative ideas and, and apps since I was, you know, 16, 17. Mm -hmm. And I've had different startups and, and different companies and different opportunities. And I like getting out in the community and meeting cool people. And I met a really, really cool kid named Marcos and, uh, you know, just started talking to him. and. He was actually a senior at one of the career technical academies here. and was just really impressed by his vibe and uh, just started talking. And it ends up that his sister had been bullied. And uh, his you know, friend, Blaze, also who's a designer, went to the school too. His sister also had been bullied. So we just got together and uh, you know, kind of brainstormed a solution mm -hmm. and uh, created a solution. Three months later, we presented to the superintendent of Clark County. And we had a you know working product, and now we're in Clark County. That's so terrific that you actually built in and implemented it into the Clark County School District so quickly. Um, I know that cyberbullying is really prominent right now, but there's also you know mean girl phenomenon and all sorts of bullying that happen all the time. So for you guys to create something that combats it is really awesome. I actually heard that you have an awful name that you were called behind your back. I thought that was off the record. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, when I, uh, my first job, I was a pizza man. Uh -huh. I was probably the best, worst pizza man ever. And uh, so uh, I stopped working at that pizza place. And I was uh, with a buddy. I went into Costco to get my tire changed. Uh -huh. Really great place to get your tire changed. Uh, I walked in, and this kid that I've never met before, like nonchalantly, was like, that'll be 582 pube head. Well. <laughs> Like, did that guy just call me pube head? What? You know? Did he just know you really well? Yeah, I guess, like, behind my back, uh, I had, used to have curly hair. And, uh, yeah, like, like, my boss called me pube head. Yeah, you definitely don't have curly hair anymore. Yeah, that was not normal. Like, I didn't, I didn't like that. So I've never been to Costco ever, ever since. <laughs> did, have you ever been, like, called anything mean or, like, have been affected by bullying? Yeah, well, so everyone's affected by bullying, I think, Everybody at is, some definitely. point. But I don't have a particular name, but when I was in college, uh, I had a friend, every time I entered his dorm room, he would grab his guitar, no matter how far away it was from him, and play I Think I'm Turning Japanese on it. Just Rest when I walked up. in, yeah. Just be like, hey, Asian. That's not nice. I know. If I wish I had that app so I could report him to my <laughs> <laughs> uh, supervisors. Anyway, so who else are your partners and who else is working on this? And yeah, so we have uh, three co-founders. So it's me, Marcos, uh, Blaze, and TJ, who's mm -hmm. uh, out in California. The rest of us are here. We're in uh, our second month at the mill right now. Awesome. Um, we just, you know, we're really busy and and uh, really focused on the on the problem. It's cool because it seems because you know I've done other apps before. And it's always hard to kind of get traction and gain momentum, but it's such a meaningful 
you know, issue that we're trying to solve, that it just seems like doors are, are really opening and the community is really just helping us kind of move it forward. It's, it's really That's been great. a cool process. So do you have process. like a vision and like goal, like six months, one year, what would you like to see the app do? I mean, I think going through this process, we're learning so much that, you know, bullying is something that's always has been around and always is going to be around. Mm -hmm. And so anything that we can do to really kind of make that issue and make it easy for students to report it and then make it easy for, you know, administrators to monitor it you know, find out statistics and kind of deal with it. Mm -hmm. Whatever, you know, we can do to, to reach that goal is kind of our, our vision, you know. So right now we're focused on kind of implement, implementation and making sure that the app's running smoothly in all the schools that we're at. And, uh, and then we'll, you know, really be focused on expanding. Perfect. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for contributing to the community in such an impactful way. And I hope your Bully, Lab, Bully Alert app, you know, grows and expands to other um, districts, etc. Awesome. So, thank you for coming, and will everyone give him a round of applause? Thanks, guys. <laughs>
and launch new ideas faster oh, right, and cleaner. Right, right. So, yeah, and that's one of the things I want to talk about later is yeah. like how does a startup work with a big company and like how that goes. Yeah. But, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. So, sure. so we got this uh, Internet of Things, like our light bulbs <laughs> and our eyeglasses and our underwear is all connected to this Internet. Like, <laughs> yes. Um, will anyone get access to my... Un underwear? Well, that depends what kind of underwear you buy and what you like to do with it on a daily basis. Well, this will be in, you know, the, in the future, right? You got I mean, batteries? In the future, you got batteries we all have, no. Um, no, I, oh, you, know, it's, you know, talk about transitions and stuff. Um, two weeks ago, I, I was pulled into a meeting, and they said, just come here and, and listen to what it has to say. We'd like to get your advice on something. And then halfway through the meeting, they say, okay, Elliot, you're one of three people in charge of the IoT strategy at Dell. I'm sorry, what? I don't even know anything about IoT. I don't want to go to jail. And you talk about like transitions, and you talk about having to drink from a fire hose and come up with new concepts and new ideas. Um, you know, I had to look through all this, and you know what I found? I found out that I'm looking at a couple of startups that I found to be really interesting. I looked at the previous two weeks that we can take what they have done and do something they weren't expecting at all with, mm -hmm. their, with their product and take it to a whole new level. And yeah, yeah. that's, that's how I always look at... Um, new innovation, new operations. And that can because be any of these guys, right? Anyone, right? right. Yeah. I mean, ideas are fantastic, and Front you know row, what I third row could be any. Yeah. What I've always found is that whenever I talk to a startup, I talk to them every week. I'm actually going to California in two weeks to, to do a whole startup day uh, with eight security startups. Um, what they have as a product is not what they're expecting me to see. Okay. And, and when I look at what they've done, I always think about they have some really cool tech. I'm going to add this piece, this piece, I'm going to pull this piece in, and I'm going to make it three to five times more interesting than these guys even realized they had. And that's what a chief architect does. You widen it out, you brought it out, you take what they have, and you make it so much more. Right. And then nine times out of ten, they're like, I didn't even think about doing that. Well, go ahead and think about doing that. Maybe it's a good idea to move in that direction. So it's a kind of a creative job you have, right? Like you've got to basically stop thinking the way the average person would like use some software and then say like yeah. well what about a weird case or like someone with I, unbelievable I, computing power would it break then or would it in my job my job is always to think out of the box and take what people have assumed is the right idea and make two plus two equal five you've got to always just come up with new tech new concepts new ideas and then figure out which ones do you want to launch which ones make sense which ones do we want to build at a big company? And more along the lines of, where do I want to not build? I want to buy. I want to, um, I want to innovate. I want to invest in a smaller company who could be more nimble than me to make this tech happen under my guidance or not. Right. And then they are able to get it to market with my guidance. And then I can bring it in and make it 2 plus 2 equals 5. Because gotcha. I'm not going to be able to build everything. My engineers and my guys are working on the products we have. Right. We're never going so to be that. So startups just try to think inside that frame instead of wasting resources on the stuff that and yeah, we'll it's, kind of get taken care of. Yeah, and then think about you know you, you have this idea in your mind, right? Um, like like for instance, uh, one of the guys out here was talking about uh, the bully app, and I thought that was an amazing idea. My yeah, first thoughts when he mentioned it was, okay, how are you protecting the identity of the person that filed it? How are you going to put facial recognition into that to find the guy who was bullying him and just take a picture and send it in? How can we tie that back to the person's driver's license so the least police can be alerted that something's happening? Hmm. That's the first thoughts that went to my mind about something as simple as he wants to report a bully incident. What if that stresses him out? Um, if that stresses him out, <laughs> welcome to startup world. <laughs> right? <laughs> hey. No, that's the truth. That's the truth. Okay. Go so, big or go home, man. So I like, how <laughs> fictional is the future of say quantum computing, like ah. hackers in the world, like like, I don't know. What what are like what are some crazy things that are coming? Basically, this what, stuff what keeps is, you up at night that like not, might come yeah. and you know you talk about things like quantum computing and biologic computing and all these things like that. Um, people think, oh, this is uh, you know Skynet from Terminator. We're all going to die. And um, <laughs> the answer the answer to that is um, this stuff is real. We are working and on the these The answer things. is yes? The answer is yes. In, we are going to make Skynet. Absolutely. Terminator. No. Um, when you talk to, the, when you work at the levels that I work at with Intel and Microsoft and such, quantum computing isn't a question. It's just a reality we're going to get to. The question is, how do we do it successfully? How do we make it meaningful? And why are we doing it? Right? And then when you do something like that, when you take an innovation and you, and you run with it, what are the consequences? And that's what a lot of startups don't think about. And what the guidance I give them is, 
When you do something like this, what are the consequences of you doing that? There are consequences and there are benefits. Right. So when quantum computing, we could put it out there, we can get it going, we could put it on laptops, and it, could, it has a very good chance of blowing up every encryption algorithm we've got, right? So what are the consequences and should we put it out there to the general public? Because doing that gives hackers tools. It gives bad guys tools. It gives yeah. you know, all if the wrong people the right tools might. to do bad things to, wrong, to the good people. So it's, you know, when you take, for lack of a better word, quantum leaps in technology. Ooh, that's you a like that? That's a pop I just joke, thought yeah. that one. That was a good one, right? Um, Feedback. Yeah. Mm. Um, <laughs> 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 um, when, you, when you do these kind of things, you have to think about, is, it, is the technology we have ready for it? And is this the right time? You can always bring out more tech and new tech later as everything's ready to go with it. But if you put out something that's before it's time, before the public's ready for it, before everybody's used, you have been thought out the entire threat model of it. I tend to think in threat models because when someone thinks out, here's a good idea, okay, here's how the hackers are going to go after it. Here's how we have nah, to right, bolster right, right, it. Right, here's right. how we have to think about it, right? So every good idea comes with consequences. Mm. And part of my job is to drive new security innovation and technology innovation to let good ideas fly and go while making them safe and usable. And that's a yeah, big part yeah. of no, the job. A, yeah. yeah, it's a big important job. I'm glad someone's doing it. Um, <laughs> so is it true like most people use password as password? Or is that just, oh is that just the God, thing like, people wouldn't talk believe. about? I, 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 I have a situation. I heard just that, the but other I was day. like, uh, you're just true. This, you know? this person said, I put complexity in my password. I changed the word password. I put a dollar sign in front of one of the S's. We're good. Password. Oh, genius, moron. Absolutely. You know? Well done. See you on the other side. You know, it's. Um, <laughs> is this your credit card? <laughs> right. I, you know, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. You, you see things like uh, Apple Pay coming out. Google Wallet's been around for years. You see all these things, oh, yeah. and everybody's going to just blindly trust. And. It's, it's okay. got to be safer than a debit card, though, right? Because debit card's got numbers on it. No. It's something you have, something you know, something you can trust, and how much you're going to put that in the hands of something you don't know how it operates. Hmm. Right? Now, I'm not saying that they're not safe. I'm saying that the second those things came out, the hackers are going after it. They're getting right. ahead of it before right. it ever shows up. So we have to think about how that works and what we're going to do with it. Okay. Um, and uh, with passwords and stuff, you know, one of the things we're working on heavily as an industry is how to get rid of them. Passwords yeah. are just I not tenable. Yeah. It's just not sustainable. How many people have to reset their passwords on a weekly basis because they're using so many things and running so many operations and they can't remember them? I am one of them. I cannot remember all my passwords. It is annoying, right? So what is the next best thing? How are we looking at stuff? How are we working with stuff? I right. got to tell you, um, there's a couple of startups that we're looking at that have done brilliant work in the password. Right, Retina scans? What's that? Retina scans? Is that the thing? Oh, yeah. I see yeah. that in the movies a lot. You just... Yeah, you, you stick like, your oh. eye in there. Yeah, the, the, here's, here's the beautiful thing of it. You know, one of the things they talk about is... Uh, here's a good one. Fingerprint scanners, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I got that on the... So, yeah, you got, you got the one on the iPhone here, right? So, what's the problem with the fingerprint scanner? The problem is, you know, I'm going to get a little techie here. It takes four points of recognition. Legally, they only accept in legal terms six points of recognition. So, these can't be used legally. Now, if you really want to get military grade, the scanner should have six points of recognition, a heat sensor in it, and a heartbeat sensor in it. Right. Because you know why? Someone's going to cut off your finger and they want to make sure it's alive. Everybody. Right? So, everybody want an iPhone now? Ready for the scanners? <laughs> the idea is it's always going to be interesting. you got to do the next deck level. Oh, sorry. I, didn't. I know something I heard. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're getting close to the end time. So, sure. um, I guess, well, where, where can people find more about you? Um, oh, like, sure. if you have specific questions, do you mind sharing a LinkedIn? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I was just downtown uh, doing a tech startup conference this, this um, right. tech early cocktail? tech talk I, mean, I was at. Celebrate. Um, yeah. I'm doing more startup work next week in California. Um, I love working with new companies, new startups, bright people who are doing innovative stuff. If I can help in any way, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm on LinkedIn. If you look up Elliot Lewis at Dell, there's only one of me, thank God. And um, <laughs> no, we could use a few. And uh, I'd be happy to, you know, work with you and figure out what we can do to make things that much more easier and better. Okay, happy to do it. We're gonna sing a song for you. Oh God, no! Please bring the lyrics up. What song is this? Uh, it's our special drinking song. Okay. So it's uh, nothing you would know yet. So you, oh, just, you okay. just absorb it all. I and, will just uh, take it in. And they, yeah, advice for startups <laughs> that they're more nimble than big corporations. <laughs> I love that. 
So our ups and downs we gather round and sing a drinking song. A toast to those we love the most in a place where we belong. Cheers! Huzzah! <laughs> oh, no drink. I ran out of it. Thanks, everybody. Pre appreciate it. Of Dell. YouTube holiday what TV first thing I want to talk about here is my shirt. I don't know if you can see it a little bit. Yes, that's exactly right. Who watches Breaking Bad? Yeah, I you've seen the show? Done. It is done. Of course it's done. I was walking from Gold Spike <laughs> to here and this guy yelled at me because the shirt says something on it. It says RIP. He was like, "Yeah, I know how it ends." I guess he's watching it now. And I'm like, what? Oh my God, I'm so sorry. But you know, first of all, the first episode, which is the pilot, if you don't know what that means, it means the first episode of a TV show, he has terminal cancer. He's gonna die. Second of all, this is Heisenberg. It isn't necessarily Walter White. That's the, you know, Walter White is the main guy and then his alter ego is Heisenberg. So maybe just Heisenberg dies. But Walter White's fine, could be anything. I'm just saying, he didn't have to yell at me. Second of all, <laughs> what I do is I celebrate holidays every day on YouTube because there are holidays every single day. And I'll go to those in a moment. And I apologize, I have not been disciplined lately. I have not been doing my holiday shows, but I'm getting back to it. I have all kinds of things coming up, like collaborations, like with my friend Chloe, who is in the back. Chloe, please stand up. <laughs> Chloe, stand up. Yes, yes, no, that Chloe, not you, Chloe, but I, yes, there's another Chloe, Chloe, Chloe Goya, who I adore, but the YouTube Chloe, we're going to do collaborations, what's your YouTube channel, Chloe, in the back? You don't want to know a YouTube? Okay, Chloe Rose, it's going to be, I'm giving you a free plug, you should appreciate it! Yes, yes, so where's my friend, Evan, I was watching you up here. And I'm really mad at you. You're mad at me? I'm disappointed in you. Why? Because there's a major holiday happening right now that involves you. Do you know what this is? Bully Awareness Month. Why didn't you mention that when you were up here? I, I ran out of time. I won't mention it right now. I went on your Twitter. It wasn't on your Twitter. It's on. We're doing a big... <laughs> what? No, no, no. October is National Stop Bullying Month. Yesterday was National Stop Bullying Day. Today, this week is National Stop Bullying Week. You're not talking about these things. We have a big we did. Saturday. We did. We did. We did. You did. See that better than you. <laughs> what kind of bully alert man are you? Add me on Instagram. <laughs> Add you on Instagram? Yeah, there's stop bullying. We're, do, we're doing a, an event. <laughs> doing an event. Am I <laughs> stop bullying? That's great. Okay, that's all right. What you're doing is great, and I love you. It's amazing. Good for you. Very good. So also today, it's National Pet Obesity Day. That's what today is. And I just have to say that I don't have the same mindset as the people who made this holiday. I'm like, let the pets be obese. I mean, seriously, I believe that souls, they choose the bodies of the lifetime. And if I were a dog, I'd want to be obese. 
<laughs> I wanted to eat all the things that I just couldn't eat. And there is no correlation. And studies have shown this. There's no correlation between depression and, and, and skinny and fat and all that stuff. It just doesn't exist. As a matter of fact, there was a study done by McMaster University in Canada that showed that the FTO gene, which is the fat gene, is that bad to say, can you not say fat anymore? Is that not PC? Are you guys okay with the word fat or not? You're okay, okay, good, good, good. So studies actually show that actually people who are heavier are happier, believe it or not. They, yes, they are by 12% or something. So let the pets be fat. Pets do not have, pets they don't, they don't have image issues. We humans have image issues. And I personally feel that if you're a pet, you should enjoy being a pet, okay? This is how I personally feel. And now a very important announcement. I want to say something on Saturday. It's National Coming Out Day. Saturday's National Coming Out Day. Woo! Yes, 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 yes. So, very, very big announcement here. I want to tell you all that um, I like, I like, I like sausage very much. <laughs> I do. I like the sausage um, cut. You know, because you know you have all the links. I don't like. I like the cut sausage. Um, I also, you know, like it. Thicker, but not too thick. Um, Long-ish. Like when I go to Whole Foods, that's how I buy the sausage. Um, and I just, this might offend my vegetarian friends, I don't know. And uh, Saturday is also National Sausage Pizza Day! Yes! That is what Saturday is, National Sausage Pizza Day. So it's very hard to talk about that right now because you know a lot of people have a thing with sausage or against the sausage. But I'm not against the sausage. I love the sausage. And on that note, there's no sponsor tonight. No, there's no sponsor, but it's okay. It's okay because you have me and you have the most wonderful, amazing Dylan who's gonna come up here and talk about all kinds of new exciting things. So welcome Dylan. Yes. Yes. Hello, good man. Hello. Did you miss me a little bit? I did. I'm I appreciate even, it. I'm not really even sure if you came out of the closet or not. But. No. Well, no, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's kind out of, of a, out of the sausage there closet. There were some. There were some metaphors, but there I'm not metaphors. sure. What are you talking about? <laughs> really I was very direct. I said everything very straight, not gay. Okay. No, that's true. Go talk. Okay, so here is what we're gonna do. Since we don't have a sponsor. Um, I recently left the downtown project, and I am now working on this podcast full time. Yes, full time. So, yes. right, it's always like a little unnerving when you leave a paycheck and you come to a place where you're going to try to build something that's been revenue negative quite a bit from my bank account for a while. Mm. But uh, I believe it's very much possible, and we have started talking to the community about people who can help support uh, the podcast. So I wanted to make it an advertisement for us to say, we are looking for volunteers. We need more marketing, certainly, so we can get the view counts up. And then from there, we can get the sponsorships. We also need sponsorship help. So if you guys have friends that uh, you think might have companies that would be interested in talking to the down downtown community, we didn't be interested in talking to them. Who might like to then, be a volunteer? I'm just saying, anybody? I see hands. Jennifer, yes, Steve, yes. Oh, and Evan, the guy who doesn't good. tweet very well, but he's going to do it too, maybe. Okay, good. Right, right. Okay, good. Be good. No, I think it'd be fun to have Evan be good. Yeah. But um, yeah, so, so we need some marketing help, so a bunch of volunteer needs. And then also we're putting together a board of directors, so we're looking for those really special people that can help us get like really powerful and amazing guests and the kind of people that can really make the show kind of flourish and, and give some credibility to us when we're kind of reaching out to some of these other um, networks that don't trust Las Vegas for this kind of quality show. So if you have people you recommend for the board, um, I'd love to hear that too. And then, do you know what else? I don't do know you else. know what else? I'm excited to find out. Tell me, talk to me. The new thing is we are also now being distributed in several different places. So we have um, uh, iTunes is now up. So you can actually just subscribe to us, which is weird. We've never actually been a podcast on iTunes, but it's now there. Yeah, we're on so iTunes now. Like, wow, that's yes. awesome. I'm excited about that. We, we flirted with it a bit, but it's up now. So you go ahead and subscribe. We have an audio version that's up right now. Um, so you guys can listen to it while you're at work. And then we also have a video version that's coming. There's also, we uh, kind of rebuilt the website, so it kind of focuses more on social. We now have playlists. You can go back in time. We, you know, a lot of people don't know how many guests we've had. We're at 87 mm -hmm. episodes. Um, if you go back in time, there's been just amazing, amazing guests. And the whole time, we've True. always had better guests than um, we should have. So I, I'm, I'm hoping to go back and try to try to help like get people to look at some of those old episodes again. And then we're also um, on blip.tv. And SoundCloud, so other more places to go. 
And More places to find yeah. Downtown Podcast. Right, that's it. So yes. um, yeah, it's just that simple, but we really are serious about it. I think these volunteers, we didn't get a chance to, to thank them this week like we often do, but people mm -hmm. like you and Pavel mm -hmm. and Alan, especially some of the earlier people, and Jonathan who edits the podcast every episode. It's just amazing amount of hours. I'm sure it's in the several thousands of volunteer hours. Mm -hmm. And um, these guys, they, they put it in for their passion, so if we can get them maybe work and turn this thing profitable, mm -hmm. it would be amazing. So and we're you moving are now, towards this is it. Your, this is what you're doing now. Oh, wow. So what is this? What was uh, that? So thought, you are now, this I is like. that was like elevating is, to a new level know, kind of music. I don't know. I don't know. He's doing something, Mr. <laughs> DJ Man. That's what uh, happens when it goes up, so. Yes. Yeah. So this, yeah. is your, this is what, this is your passion project. You have now, like, you folk, like, you're leaving the job and you're, you're doing this now. This is like everything for you. You got to follow your dreams. You got to follow your, who's, who's down for that? Following your dreams. Yeah. Subscribe. Yes. Yes, I love it. It's the thing you do on your free time, you should do it on your full time, I figure. Yes. So it's good. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Well, well thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah, yes. thank you. Thanks, thank you, audience people. Yes. Yay, they applauded. Thanks, everyone. I want you guys to welcome Tom all the way from Wisconsin. He ended up with our fortune, and he's going to deliver it for you guys. What did you hear from the audience? All right, they said, uh, don't worry about what you can't do. Worry about the kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> How close was that? It's just not anywhere close at all. No. <laughs> uh, it's don't spend time thinking about what might have been. Spend time at the Beauty Bar, which is a local downtown spot, in case you guys don't know. But kangaroos are great, too. Wow, yeah. Thanks, Excellent. Tom. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. Beat bum, beat bum. Downtown project. Vegas, we the hardest. Hashtag.